Hi everyone, so today I'm barefaced because I am gonna get ready for work, but at the same time, I'm gonna multitask and do a project pan update because it's literally been four months since I did my first update, which was in February. And honestly, if I don't do it now, I'll probably never get around to doing it. Basically, I took my time doing this video because I just felt like I wasn't making a ton of progress and I didn't wanna update and come on here and just not have any updates because I feel like that might have been a bit boring. I don't know. I did mention that in my get ready with me and a lot of you did encourage me. So I am going to share with you my update. I have not finished up many pro products. I don't know why. I just feel like makeup takes a long time to use. It does actually. So I'm going to go in the same order as I did last time. I'm going to go through base products, then bronzers, blushes, highlighters, all that stuff. So the first product I want to talk about is the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer. This is in Alaska. Light 2. Last time I had around 80% and now I'm basically all the way done so it really needs, as you can see, it's struggling to come out but there is a little bit more. I would say there's like a 5% in here. I've been keeping it upright and just really giving it a vigorous shake every time I want to use it. So that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to use that as a base first. I think this looks better applied with a brush than a beauty sponge so that's why I'm using a brush. But to be honest, I haven't used sponges in a very long time. Really can't wait until this comes out of my collection. I just feel so satisfied when I finish up a foundation because some of them can take a long time to go through. I feel like this one surprised me and did take a bit longer than usual. I look very tired and the coverage is not quite what I need it to be. So I've been using this as a base and then going over my skin with concealer and um, other products. So the next product is the Charlotte Tilbury Unisex Healthy Glow. Since my last update, I honestly have just not touched it. Even though it's been sitting in my makeup tray, I feel again like this is adding layers to my face that does not do very much and is unnecessary. So let's use a little bit today. I haven't used it very much, but yeah, it just doesn't do anything. It has no SPF in it. It smells foul and oh, I don't know. Maybe I should just take this out of my project pan. Just give it away. What do you think? What would you do? Can you tell the difference between each side? This slide is maybe slightly deeper now. I just find that this has really no place in my routine. I feel like this might be best for someone who likes a really minimal makeup look. Um, and I am not really a minimal makeup look person at this moment in my life. So last product in this category is my Clédipeau Silky Cream Foundation. This is in the shade 20. As you can see, it's really near the end of its life, but it just keeps going. And hopefully by the next update, it is completely out of my life. Another week or two of use and it's gone. How I like to use this product is I like to mix it in with this Cover FX Enhancer Drop. It kind of gives the skin a really nice glowy um, look to it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and again, because this kind of product doesn't really set this foundation, but the custom FX enhancer drops sets pretty quickly. They're a good combination. They're hopefully going to finish around the same time. Otherwise I feel like it's going to be hard to use up each of those products on its own. This gives a really nice coverage as well. So, and it makes my skin look a lot healthier and glowy, which I love. Especially in winter, my skin can look so dull. I need to get my fringe cut. And oftentimes I do have a little bit left over on my hand and I just keep it there because I like to, sometimes when I'm using other products like my cream blush and my cream bronzer, if I go out too far, I just use a little bit of that excess foundation and just blend it in. Moving on to bronzers, I've got the Rouge Bunny Rouge liquid bronzer in as if it was summer still. You can see here, this is nearly basically done. I'm really happy with that. But again, not quite. I feel like I've got a lot of products that are almost done and almost out of my collection, but not quite. And I feel like perhaps that is why I delayed doing my update. I'm just gonna be patient and um, Hopefully this will be, again, one of those products that's done in a few weeks time. But um, I do quite like this bronzer. I think it looks really natural and really glowy. And I do love this brand. I want to try more from Rouge Bunny Rouge, but I need to kind of slow down on the makeup purchases. Really been enjoying this. I just think it gives a really nice bronzed look without looking unnatural. I didn't have much of this to begin with, but I kind of kept forgetting to use it. So that's why I feel like it 
didn't get used up as quick as I expected. I'm using it pretty much daily and it has really helped. This is kind of where I like to place my bronzer and then I do like to run a bit around my nose. The next product is a real oldie. Um, this has been around in my collection for way too long. This is the NARS Laguna bronzer. This is the progress. The pan has increased in size partly because some of it is cracked. I don't know how much of it I'll be able to finish. Again, this is one that once the year is over, this is going in the bin. It's a nice bronzer. It's not my favorite bronzer, so I just kind of use it over the other one. I like to use it with this airbrush because sometimes I can go a bit heavy handed. Powders obviously take a long time to use and uh, yeah, I'm not particularly hopeful that this will be finished up by the end of the year, but we'll see. It's one of those products that I, I, I used to hear people talk about all the time, but now there's so many bronzers to choose from that I don't really hear Laguna being talked about very much. Are you one of those people that still uses this product or? Has it gone to the graveyard? Moving on to highlighters, I am pretty happy with how this one has gone. This is the three shimmering duo in 02. And so I've used up the entire bronzer. I really liked this. I've got what, 25% left, 20% left of this highlighter. So I was really happy with the progress. This is the kind of product that I just use with my finger, warm it up on the back of my hand and then just kind of melt it into the skin, dot it onto the skin my cheekbones and I think it just gives a really nice healthy looking glow. I am planning to go back to Japan next month and I may pick up another one. I don't know. I do have a lot of cream products so I probably don't need to but I do like this one and I do like three as a brand. Not talked about overly because a lot of these Japanese brands aren't really available here. You really have to go out of your way to get them. Hopefully by my next update, this will be completely gone and hopefully that won't take me four months. Next one is one that I've completely used up. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. <sighs> so happy that I did it. To be honest, as I was getting to the end of using this, I was really swirling my brush in really hard to get the little bits at the edge and just using it as a setting powder. Personally, the way I like to use this palette is mixing all three shades. When I only had this one left or this one left, I just wasn't using it as much. So I really did force myself to use it up. I still have quite a number of Hourglass products to go through, but if I didn't, I would totally repurchase this. I, I really enjoyed it. So next product is one that I would also consider to be done. And that is due to a very unfortunate incident where Joey full on took this product and smashed it on the ground. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. As you can see, there's nothing left because it was all shattered. I really do miss using the highlight portion of this palette because I loved this highlighter. I just felt like it looked so seamless on the skin. It didn't emphasize my pores and it looked really flattering. I did end up buying the Bar of Gold palette just because I missed this highlighter so much. I'm not sure if it's the exact same formula. I'm hoping it's similar. There is this tiny, tiny bit left on the side of bronzer, but honestly, it's, it's basically done. I am happy that this is kind of done, but at the same time, it's it didn't happen the way I wanted it to happen. <laughs> Anyone with small children, let me know how you prevent them from grabbing your makeup. It probably is my fault. I, I do need to kind of make sure it's out of his reach, but sometimes he's just so quick and he just grabs it. And he has started walking as well, so a lot of trouble. I miss this product and I feel like that is the mark of a good product is if it's out of your life and you miss it, that's saying a lot, especially because I have so much makeup, it's saying a lot. So the next product is one I briefly talked about before because I did use it with uh, my Clay de Pro foundation and this is the Cover FX Enhanced Drops in Sunlight and it isn't just quite done yet. This I bought in 2016, it's really old now. So it's almost two years um, and bought this as a life of 12 months. So I've been using it without any issues on my skin, but um, yeah, it's not advisable to be keeping liquid products for a long period of time. I have been enjoying it in my routine, but I probably wouldn't repurchase this again because if I don't have to mix anything with my foundation, then I don't really want to because I'm lazy. It is kind of getting to a point where um, it gets messy around here. So I hate this. I, I just 
wish it was in a pump. Again, hopefully one of those products that I'll have completely used up by the next update. Moving on to blushes, I've got the RMK Classic Film Cheeks. I've used a significant portion, I'm down to around here because this is pretty much the blush I use on the daily. I do really like it, but one thing I hate about this is, look at that. Why has this come apart? This is again another expensive product where I expect the packaging to be a lot more sturdy than it is. And I haven't even been rough with this. I am a rough person, but it's literally just been sitting in the makeup drawer. It's pretty disappointing. I have to be very careful. Or maybe I should just chuck it out and just use it like this. Not really impressed with it. I, I don't think I would repurchase it again because of the packaging. But I do like this color. I think that it works really nicely with pretty much every makeup look that I do. I think the glue, it looks like the glue that they've used isn't strong enough. It, I mean, it does give the skin a really beautiful um, sun-kissed look to it. The next product really surprised me for a number of reasons and it is the Becca Beach Tint in Watermelon. I have finally used this up. This is seven mils and it literally took me four months to actually use it up. And obviously you can see that there are little bits in here. I have tried to squeeze as much of it as I can out, but obviously there are portions of this that are not usable. So um, there is some product left in here and I'm not going to go to the effort to cut it out and whatever. I, I do love this product, but I'm not, I'm not going to go to that effort. Another thing that surprised me about this was I actually ended up really enjoying this product. When I first used it, I was pretty indifferent about it, but I, I really do enjoy it because a little goes a long way and the shade is beautiful. It's easy to work with. And I think because it lasts so long, I do think it's good value. And if by some miracle I do end up using up all of my liquid blushes, I would repurchase this. But for now, I've got too many. The last blush product I have in this project pan is my NARS One Shocking Moment palette. And I have been focusing on using up Luster, which is this gorgeous shade. I love it. I feel like NARS powders are pressed so firmly that it just takes a lot to look like you've actually used it. I do feel like I've made a dip, but honestly, it just, it goes so slowly that, yeah, I don't know, but I do enjoy it. And if I don't finish it up, I wouldn't be that mad because I think it's a gorgeous blush. I do really enjoy kind of orange toned blushes. Just find it pretty flattering on my skin tone. My one eye product is this Primer Potion by Urban Decay and I've been using it all the time but if I squeeze it down I think it's about here which is really not very much because you don't really need very much of this product in order for the eyeshadow to stick down. So yeah I've kind of been begrudgingly using this because I'm not the biggest fan of this primer because I have lots of creases on my eyes for some eyeshadows, this primer doesn't really work that well. I'm not sure if I would end up chucking this out by the end of the year because I don't like it that much and I think it isn't, it's pretty old as well. I believe now this is a doe foot applicator, so it's probably old. So I'm happy to announce that I have found the one lip product that was in my project pan. I don't remember where exactly I put it, but I did find it and this is the Chubby Stick by Clinique in Heaping Hazelnut. I've used up quite a lot because this has been in my bag and I've been constantly just using it to hydrate my lips and give it a bit of a color, a bit of sheen. It's not the most flattering color on me. So I wouldn't repurchase it in this color and I probably honestly would not repurchase this again. I'm kind of more into lip glosses now and this is, this gets really, oh, uh, just it gets pretty gross as you can see. But because I've been using it in my handbag on the daily, it's, used up pretty quickly. Oh. I'm not gonna shove this back into this packaging because that's that's gross. So I'm gonna say this is done. Yay! I don't know if that's cheating but I, I I'm just honestly could not give a crap at this point. We're nearly done. The last category is powders. I had two powders in my project pan and I'm happy to announce that I've used up one of them. This is the Suku one in Nuancing Glow. It's probably one of the worst things I tried from Suku, so I'm glad it's out of my life. I feel like the powder emphasized my skin. It didn't sit nicely. It just, it did my skin no favors. So I'm really just glad that it's finished. I have kept this because I do plan on shifting the other powder 
into this packaging because it's a lot easier to use. I feel really satisfied that this is gone because it took so long to use up. But yeah, I'm glad it's out of my life and at least I can use the packaging now. There is a positive out of it. And last product in my project pan is the Makeup Forever HD powder. And um, I don't feel like much progress has been made. It's, it's one of those powders that is infamous for causing flashback. It's not particularly flattering on the skin. You have to be very careful with not using too much. Otherwise it can look pretty white on the skin. So because of the fact that I can only use a little bit with this powder means that progress has been extremely slow. And like I mentioned, I am going to transfer this into this. So hopefully it's just easier because at the moment I'm taking off the lid like this and applying it like this. And it just, it's not enough space really to kind of swirl your brush around. So I am, I am glad to actually have a new home for it. I usually use a airbrush with this um, and use a tiny bit tapping off any excess and just a little bit under the eye, around the nose and the chin. That's really where I put it in the center of my face. So yeah, it's really just the most minute amount of powder. So again, I feel like it's one of those products where I just don't feel like I will really make much progress in because of that. Let me know if you tried it. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. I think most people I've spoken to don't like this powder at all, but I'm gonna persist. So yeah, that's my project pan updates. I have to get ready really quickly now because I only have like five minutes before I need to head out the door and I haven't obviously done the rest of my face. I've just spent too much time talking. But um, yeah, hopefully the next update won't be too long and hopefully I'll have way more products that I would have mentioned that I finished. I have to say I have learned a lot from doing Project Pan. It hasn't been all terrible. It's taught me patience. It's taught me persistence. That's already a lot. So the next time I buy something, I just have to think, okay, can I dedicate a year to using this up? Um, and that has helped kind of, in a way, curb some of the ridiculous spending that I do on makeup. Anyway, if you wanna see more of my face, it's not usually unfinished like this, then hope you subscribe and I hope to catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.